Interesting idea. Um, yes, to do something jointly, I already su suggested something like that uh, at the end of my talk. It does, however, assume quite a lot of coordinated work. And I'm not sure how that is going to be done and by whom. I think most of all, I mean, it would um, ask from experts in the country. But for most countries, if you want to influence the European Commission in their work programs, you have an expert and you have a program committee member. So I would assume that the experts are maybe here in the room, or at least you know who the experts are. So they would have to come together and agree on something. They would have to instruct their work uh, program committee members, and they would have to push it into programs. So that would be the road to go. And at least someone or a group of people has got to step up and say, okay, we are going to coordinate that. And most of the time that's not going to be one research council in a country, but it has to come from bottom up, I suppose. So that will be my first reaction. Bottom up. Okay. Yes. <coughs> yeah, well, um, I once showed, um, just right now, 30 minutes ago, I showed a slide where there was actually one big, uh, one word in big letters that was said no. Uh, so I would like to, um, if I have the option, the possibility, which I don't have now, I would like to, uh, to present you with another slide um, which would answer the question which you see, uh, should we consider a joint program between EC and member states uh, or regions on multilingualism and I would write in letters which, were, which would be even bigger, yes! Uh, because I think multilingualism is the crucial issue of Europe. If we don't understand each other, then we probably cannot live uh, with each other in, well, I wouldn't say in peace, but in quietly. Uh, so, uh, so this is something which we really have to think about, uh, but I think it should not be limited to language technologies only, or the language technologies should be uh, understood very loosely. It should not be only things like machine translation, but also things like um, learning languages or whatever. So my uh, answer to this question is a big yes. Thank you. Okay. Who else? <laughs> Alright, so, uh, well, for the question, uh, should we consider a joint program, a larger program integrating uh, several efforts? Uh, I think the global answer is yes, of course. Uh, I stress that in uh, my presentation that it's uh, good to integrate efforts, but I also stressed, uh, and that's close to Alice's comment, that this requires a significant effort at the coordination level, uh, and not only with money, but with experts at a good position. Um, and so we have to build such a group, and in that sense, um, that it should also be top down in some sense. That it's the, it should be bottom up, as I said, in the sense that uh, uh, there should be enough willingness to, 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 of many people in various places to do this. Um, and I, I hope we have part of that uh, just in this room. Uh, but uh, it should also come a little bit top down for having this uh, integrating force uh, and make the, the thing uh, happen. So, and, uh, and if something like this uh, uh, starts to happen, I'm, I'm sure that uh, France uh, would consider participating in a way to differ. Uh, Edouard, you mentioned Chistera. Do you think that, for example, Chistera could uh, take this topic as a, a topic of interest and gather uh, several member states, maybe more than the ones which are presently participating in Shistera in order to address this, this question? Uh, all right, so if you speak of uh, Shistera as it is now, um, an easy thing to do is uh, to propose uh, a topic as one of the topics 
we can cover in the coming years, um, and then it has to be adopted by the, the participating countries. Uh, that's probably an easy thing to do. Uh, of course, you see the size, so uh, it's not the answer to all what we need. Uh, it, uh, Shista is, in addition, focused on uh, the long-term research part. Um, the goal of research in Shistera is not to uh, add a new uh, under-resourced language. So it could be part of the uh, part of the, the way to go. Uh, it could uh, also uh, serve what, uh, in Shistera the funding agencies also discuss of uh, potential other projects uh, like setting up an Aeronet Plus on some topics. So it could be uh, used just as a forum of funding agencies uh, to discuss together with other agencies of setting up a, a new instrument. So it could help also just as a part of the uh, of a group to, to discuss of a larger group. Okay. Any other remark, Alice? <laughs> Um, maybe just to explain more clearly why I said it had to be first of all a bottom-up thing and of course yes it has to be followed up by something top-down. Um, the reason being is that from the top multilingualism is an issue but it's something that shouldn't cost any money, at least them not any money because if for as much as it is a problem and it needs money it's going to be done by Google and IBM anyway. That's what people at the moment think in research councils. So first of all, you need a story to explain what it is that Google or and or IBM and Microsoft is doing, maybe not right, not completely, or whatever. Because if I look in our organization, they, the people at the top, they don't know. They really don't know. So they need a story for that. So it might be very useful to have something like that, and then only a maximum of two A4, because that's about all they can manage to read. Okay, so uh, our uh, industrial allies are uh, outside of Europe, this is what you're saying. Okay, uh, we take no question from the floor, I see. Thank you, Philippe Walker. I'm uh, managing LT Innovate, which is uh, the association of uh, European SMEs involved in language technologies. And I don't really have a question, I have actually an answer to your question. What is the story? I think the story is <coughs> that we need to make um, the gigantic masses of content that we have in Europe that are obviously produced in many different languages available to a market of 500 million Europeans. That's the big opportunity we have. Now, we're spending billions on subsidizing broadband, which is something that has to happen anyway and that the telcos will have to uh, make available to the market uh, whatever happens, otherwise they're out of competition. Nevertheless, they're, they're, they're subsidized at the level of billions, but we don't find even a few million to put into place a multilingual infrastructure that would massively support the content uh, market in Europe and the multilingual content market on top of it, and that would actually uh, allow a proper European content market to appear in the first place. So I would very strongly plead for a very big, powerful, dedicated program to be made available to us in the same way as we're making available billions for broadband. If we spend money on pipes, we can spend money on content too, and we should and we ought to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other uh, remarks or questions? Yes, please. Uh, um, I'm sorry to monopolize uh, the meeting and... Um as you know, I work for IBM, but I'm not here representing IBM. I'm paying my own um, trip here. And um, um, IBM is very much focused also on services, because um, uh, IBM is launching the services um, uh, science into uh, universities. And I would like to uh, make a remark to um, uh, the Czech Republic and to Carol in particular, I took notes while you were uh, speaking, and you said that the market is so small. Let me put my glasses on. Uh, the market is so small. Uh, 
whenever you have to develop something, you have to think uh, uh, that you have uh, at least to have 80 million uh, buyers, potential buyers, and you also have to have a partner, uh, an industry partner. To me, the market is as wide as the world is. And let me tell you a story. Uh, I'm not a, a technical person, I have a degree at law. Whenever I have a problem with my computer, I ask uh, assistance. Uh, one day, uh, I called in the afternoon and no Italian support was available. I have no problem with English, I'm Italian. So I said, oh, that's okay, I'll do this in English. I realized that the support they were giving me is far much better uh, in, in English than in Italian. So, to reply to your um, good point and also to reply to your point on how to address less resort, resourced and weakly fragmentary supported languages, the point from my perspective is not the language, because the language is the medium. And let me write my notes. Um, in a service based uh, economy, as are, especially in Europe, um, um, we should probably uh, choose the call center uh, according to the technology competence rather than on the language competence. So if in the Czech Republic people are very much skilled in IT services, it is language independent because technology helps it. If I'm Italian and I want support from a, a Czech Republican uh, help desk support uh, agent, uh, technology is there for an Italian who doesn't speak English to be translated into the Czech Republic, in, into your own language, and for Italian to be translated backwards. So the Italian uh, uh, user may have a service without having to know English. So this is the story behind. So I think the, uh, the skill is more important than the language. If the Czech Republic is very IT skilled, technology is there to help you. And you have a big market. It's not as little as the language is. It's okay. just as big as the technology. The, the service, the underlying service is big. If there is a big request for Google support centers uh, or Microsoft or IBM products, and the Czech Republic is able to provide that service in the native language, technology is there because it's a medium. Language is a medium. Okay, so your proposal is knowledge in one language and access with uh, knowledge in uh, different languages. Do you want to add uh, something? Well, I would say that, that you're probably right, that, uh, that if, you, if you think in an abstract level on the, over the technologies, that you're definitely right. But for example, um, if you develop something like a grammar checker for Czech, uh, so which tells you whether this comma should or should not be put into the sentence just punctuation. I wonder whether it helps you in your Italian. Uh, so, you know, and it, it takes a lot of effort to uh, distinguish uh, whether this kind of construction is correct in Czech or is in, incorrect in Czech. Um, uh, it's not only the technology, it's only filling uh, the technology with particular language which is at stake here. So generally, you are right that, that technologies might be developed, but also filling them with particular language details is, is very intensive. And this is what takes a lot of effort, and which is then only uh, a matter of one small market. Yes. Um, Felicity, my University of Amsterdam. So um, I have a question and comment. It's also related to what Alice said. Um, I'm really wondering, what is the added value of a joint program uh, for members that have no programs of their own. So we all have zeros, put the zeros together, you remain with a zero. And then I, I actually wonder, what is the added value with this, um, with this joint program? I don't want to be you know, spoiling the, I'm a researcher, I would benefit from this, but what is the added value? In fact, I see two things, possible things. One is for researchers, the brilliant researchers that are in France might get funding exactly from the Netherlands, which doesn't happen nowadays. The brilliant Dutch ones might get it from uh, Dublin in, in, in Ireland. We don't have this kind, of, this kind of thing. The best ideas that reside somewhere in Europe remain where they are, where there is no funding, and cannot move to somewhere where there might be funding. 
I wonder whether a joint program without, without an aim that could solve this kind of a bottleneck can, can serve anything. Anybody can has an answer to this? Well, I will let the, the panel answer, but uh, I mean, uh, first is a joint program with a aim, not without an aim. Eh? So if we have a program, it's to do something uh, together. I mean, what the situation now, for example, uh, Edouard Geoffroy mentioned the Quero program we have in France. 200 million euro budget, 100 million euro public funding. They have something similar in Germany, Theseus, 200 million euro budget, going in parallel, okay? And then the Commission spent 150 million on language technology. Okay, so this goes in parallel. Don't you think that there should be some commonalities in addressing the topic altogether, exchanging best practices, exchanging data, exchanging ideas, competing, uh, comparing the, the, the level of and quality of uh, the technology we develop? In, in, in two terms, what is the aim of putting it together? Fair enough. I mean, I'm wondering, I'm, I'm researching, I want to so much. I'm actually, you know, Wondering, can we phrase this? Well, it's some sense, who's, who's skeptical of myself. It's achieving better efficiency through uh, gathering a critical, critical mass. I mean, each of our country, I think, don't have the critical mass presently at the European level compared with the states or compared with China. I mean, if we join them together, then we reach the critical mass, both in terms of the SMD of researchers as we have now, and in terms of the funding for those researches. So it's economic reason. Excuse me? This is an economic reason, that's what you're saying. Com economic reason. So this is the aim is an economic well, it's actually competition, efficiency, competition efficiency of research. I would say. But I, I leave the yes. Maybe I can add something uh, to that. The main reason why um, governments and research councils like participating in these kinds of uh, joint research programs is for one, it's external justification that they're choosing the right topic. And they really need that. Secondly, it's a possibility for, to have more national researchers and, and to exit researchers funded because actually there's top up funding. If you look at the joint research programs in the area of pluses, you get at the moment 33% top up from the Commission and it looks like it's going up to 50%. So it's just, it's just a big carrot. They can get more funding. It's money. So it's money and external justification. Slightly more than two words, but that's what it is. Uh, Hans? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Also, sorry. Yes, uh, another factor uh, is also um, having people uh, working together to avoid duplication in, in that particular case. Because uh, yeah. um, in our domain, uh, it's, uh, it's quite easy to, to have varied research, not varied, uh, research in various places which ignore each other um, and putting them uh, in a more coordinated fashion allows to uh, map better what's going on and have the researchers working on the same topic uh, get exposed to each other, compare to each other, evaluate in a comparative way, share corpora, uh, just for example, Joseph mentioned the program. There is a clause in the consortium agreement uh, which says that uh, even if a corpus cannot be disclosed very widely, uh, it should be uh, uh, put at the disposal of another partner if it's useful for that partner in the framework of the program. So uh, that's an, a way that, that creates a circle within you can share data more easily than outside. That's also a, so that, there are plenty of examples showing that uh, coordinating, especially in our domain, uh, is, is important. It's different in physics, for example, uh, or biology, where you just have uh, your equipment, you publish in a conference, you discuss with people in conferences, uh, and they can reproduce uh, even if in a different place, in a different lab, they can reproduce its uh, exact measurement, uh, uh, is, the, the, the physical quantities are the same. Uh, in our place, it's all about information, and so if we don't share this information, which is our raw material, uh, we lose many things. So, I don't know if this answers. Okay, so I should, should share in the investment. 
Hans and uh, maybe the yes. last comment. Yes, I would also not be so much worried about adding up zeros because most countries that don't have a program right now nevertheless have funding. It's simply not uh, united behind a certain program. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the topic may be recognized, but there's no dedicated budget to exactly that field, but there are many projects funded and some coordination across boundaries, across uh, different countries may, on the one hand, raise attention, raise volume and raise coordination. So I, that I can see. I have my question, but now my question. Uh, in, in, in Claren, uh, uh, the flexibility helped uh, coming from a small group to a larger group in several steps. So you had maybe four countries that in the beginning met and then you go up to nine and you already take the next step and so on. So my question would be to people like uh, Joseph and Alice and others who have looked at the 185 instrument, what is the minimum level you think is necessary to make it in? Probably it cannot be just a few big countries, it cannot just be a few small countries, it cannot just be three countries. So what do you think, uh, if we really wanted to approach this, yeah, what should we go for? What do you think is the minimum so that we get an idea of the scope? Yeah? What, uh, what do we need to organize within one or two years? How many countries of what size at least we need to bring together? In case I can... Well, but I mean, it's difficult to, to guess. What I can say is that uh, when we, we, we when, when I was at the Ministry of Research in France uh, back in 2005, so uh, I, I gather uh, interest from several European countries on language technologies. And uh, at that time, 12 countries responded positively, saying that they wanted to join this initiative. So I believe half, almost half of the uh, European country at that time, uh, with the financial environment of that time, were ready to join efforts on language differences. Um, I actually looked into, um, within the context of another uh, network, I do call it NET, which is in humanities, we looked into Article 185 and decided against it because it was too much of an administrative effort. So we decided to have the, the, the network nationally funded and go for area plus because it seemed to be much more simple than going for Article 185. And I was also warned by my own colleagues in the building, who the, the ED, EDCTP, I think it is, it's too many characters, and who were actually dying at, in administration. So that's um, why I'm rather hesitant still about it. On the other hand, there is a problem that it's all going to be more simple administratively. And then again, I have to say, on the other hand, I'm now doing my second era in plus. And even though for the second one they also promised administrative simplification, I can tell you that they did, but it simplified things for the Commission and not for the applicants. <laughs> Okay, so one very last uh, comment from uh, Khalid Shukri. Hello, Shukri, European Language Research Association. I, I want to go a little bit uh, back to the uh, relationship between what we do as a research community and what the uh, other uh, guys in the big industry are doing. If we look at the participant today, I'm sure we'll see no Alcatel representatives, no Nokia, Siemens, Daimler, and, and whoever. These people, uh, if, if we uh, keep talking about the broadband or the optical fiber, when they do these kind of things and we see these big boats going around Europe putting cables, they know how to talk to the European Commission, they know how to talk to the Parliament, they know how to lobby. And this is a stage that we are missing. We are still talking about research, we try from time to time to get the research lobbying for budget. In, uh, in the Commission or national bodies and the like, without this missing piece of the puzzle, which is the big industries. Today, I guess the biggest company in our area is maybe 100 people or 200, uh, while 
the, the, the people talking to the members of the parliament are maybe 50,000 employees, companies. So that's, that's a missing, uh, missing piece. And we, we are still talking about, I want to improve the performance of my speech recognizer, of my machine translation, and this is exactly what the European Commission or the uh, uh, members of the parliament cannot understand. We, we, we are not talking the same language, we are still giving them 50 pages to read and they are only reading one page and uh, as long as we, maybe two, uh, as long as we stick to that approach, I think we are, uh, we are uh, far from convincing it. And maybe the last question is, do we really need more money to do what we have been doing for the last 10 years? Okay, okay. I can try to answer if you want to go to, to, to coffee. Uh, so, on the, the, the fact that you say we want to improve and the politicians don't care about this, I just would like to remind you that Thibaut Kleiner on his opening says that we should conduct evaluation just like NIST does it in the States. So, it seems that they have interest now in uh, quantitative and objective evaluation. Huh? On the fact that we have this problem with large companies, I perfectly agree with you. I mean, we don't have the same champions. Uh, but if we don't have uh, here Nokia or Siemens, but at least we have IBM. You say you're from IBM, so I'm very glad that IBM is here. Thank you. Okay, and uh, which was your, your last point? On how do we need uh, more, uh, more funding? Okay, so more funding, I would say, yes. Okay, thanks for coming.